Tuvalu is a country most have never heard of. This small Pacific nation is made up of a series of low-lying limestone atolls or islands. With a total ocean area of around 1.3 million square kilometres, but a landmass of less than 30 square kilometres, Tuvalu is the fourth smallest country in the world, and with a population just over 10,000, the third least populous sovereign state in the world. Tuvalu is on the front line against environmental issues, climate and economic change. Land shortage and rising seawater contaminating the freshwater supplies are causing serious issues. With people now living in marginal conditions, with high tides at their doorsteps and the loss of many traditional food crops creating a dependence on imported goods. Facing a fairly bleak future, the Tuvaluan government, working in conjunction with various development partners, has come up with a master plan to help alleviate these various issues. One of the strategies is to be using 100% renewable energy by 2020. To assist in gaining this, IUCN has been working closely with the Tuvalu Electricity Corporation and with the funding assistance of the Austrian and Italian governments have installed a hybrid solar photovoltaic system on the island of Vaitupu, the largest island in Tuvalu and home to the only government secondary school. The school has over 500 students who all live on site in the dormitories. This 46 kilowatt system is a grid parallel design and was installed to provide a 24 hour electricity supply to the school with up to 200 kilowatt hours per day. Before this system was installed, the school's electricity was limited to approximately 11 hours daily, which was supplied via a diesel generator. Now, the solar panels charge the battery system during the day and any excess electricity is sent to the island's power grid. The school draws electricity from the batteries via the inverters between midnight and 6am when the generator is switched off, thus giving them a 24-hour power supply. Solar street lights with their own battery act as security lights around the girls' dormitory, offering a place to read and study for those who find it hard to sleep. Before we don't have the solars, it, they find it very hard in the morning because they don't have lights. So I think solar have uh, given us a lot of advantages, both to the students and also for those who are staying on campus. Tragically, 17 young girls and a teacher lost their lives in a horrendous fire caused by a candle used by one of the students to study in the evening after the generator power had gone out. Having access to electricity to provide lighting in the dormitories will ensure that this sort of devastating event will never repeat itself. During the evenings, the students and staff are now able to participate in events such as the student debate night, spend their time on homework and studying for exams, or just socialising and having fun. Annually, the project saves around 122,000 kilograms of CO2 emissions and 40,000 litres of diesel, fuel normally delivered to the island via boats in 200 litre drums. These are offloaded into the water and then floated to shore. The remoteness of not only the island but also the country ensures the cost of this fuel is extremely high. Due to its success, the Tuvaluan government are looking to replicate the project on six other outer islands of Tuvalu and help them achieve their goal of 100% renewable energy by 2020.